I'm going to speak in a minute. I'm a state representative, and my district now includes um, a little bit of Haverhill as well as Methuen. So I'm trying to meet some folks in Haverhill just to um, introduce myself and, and um, let them know that um, my office is available to assist them in any way possible. Um, so, uh, and there's some coffee and donuts up there if you want any. Um, actually, coffee and muffins, so. <laughs> if I could just have your attention for one moment, please. Um, my name is Linda Campbell, and um, I think most of you probably remember participating in the census. When we had the census, we redistricted all of Massachusetts. In fact, every state in the country redistricted. And I used to represent part of uh, Methuen, and now I represent parts of both Methuen and Haverhill. And so I just wanted to come briefly to introduce myself to you, I'm trying to meet as many new people in Haverhill as I possibly can. My district is actually a good chunk of Haverhill. It is um, down in the Bradford area, and it will also be up in the Route 97 area where it connects to Haverhill, Methuen connects to Haverhill. And so the district is gonna kinda go like this, and it ties together with the trash incinerator. That's what I tell folks, because they, they ask me, how is this district gonna tie together? And I said, well, it's gonna tie together with the trash incinerator um, and the, um, the industrial complex over off um, Route 125. So um, I just wanted to say hello to all of you. Uh, to let you know where I'm coming from a little bit and where I'm going and what I think some of the um, important issues are that the state legislature is going to be addressing um, in the next term come January. So I come to uh, politics by way of um, an unanticipated involvement um, in a community issue and that community issue was an environmental issue. This was um, about eight years ago in the city of Methuen um, as it butts up to the town of Dracut, uh, a, uh, a gas-fired power plant, very large power plant, was being proposed. And a group of citizens from Methuen, Andover, Haverhill, really throughout the Merrimack Valley, Dracut and Lowell, we banded together to oppose this. And the reason we opposed it was because they were going to take the equivalent of a city's worth of water out of the Merrimack River every day and that would be turned into steam for the most part up into the Merrimack Valley. Uh, and some of it would be returned as very warm water into the river. Um, we found this to be outrageous uh, simply because um, this was going to be given to them for free. And uh, the proponents of the plant refused to use, not to use coal, should, that, should coal become more accessible and cheaper. And you know, we have very high asthma rates in the Merrimack Valley. Uh, proportionally so. And we also have some higher cancer rates over in Andover. We're not exactly sure why. Um, but clearly this was not in the best interest of the public. It wasn't well thought out. Um, they were locating there simply because they were going to get free water from the Merrimack River. And no one seemed to be challenging them. So it was about a four-year battle. We ended up winning that battle. Um, and that was my introduction to um, uh, community issues and from there I became involved on City Council in Methuen. Um, I was there for six years and then we are term limited in Methuen. Both our mayor and our City Council are term limited at six years. And uh, what happened then was that a spot opened up um, in the state legislature. Our previous rep was uh, leaving after many years of service. So as with all of politics, many things usually happen there's just a whole bunch of events that allow one to run for public office. And uh, so I've been very fortunate that there were openings at the time that I had um, the capacity and the interest in, in running for office. So I feel very blessed in that respect. So in the state legislature representing the city of Methuen, um, I bring to that job um, eight years of military service. And I uh, felt very, very um, grateful that the speaker appointed me as the vice chair um, of veterans and federal affairs. And in that capacity, um, I've been able to reach out to veterans across the state, and there's so much to be done to help our veterans returning um, from Afghanistan and Iraq. Uh, we have a very large number of veterans in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and most of them are concentrated in the Merrimack Valley. 
So this is something that I feel very privileged to be involved with, um, supporting our veterans and moving forward um, in the next term. I hope that I will be serving on that committee again as the vice chair. Um, and I feel that there is a great deal more to be done to support our veterans coming home. Um, one of the things that we're working on right now, we'll be working on coming um, in the next legislative session. We have um, a special court set up. It's on a trial period for our veterans coming back. So if they are suffering from PTSD or related um, problems from their service, um, we have a court set up whereby um, a judge will work with them to get the, the services that they need through the Veterans Department and prevent them from going to jail the first time around. So it's been very successful. So instead of putting them directly in jail for substance abuse and things of that nature, we are allowing them to participate in veteran services to try and keep them out of jail because we find if they go into jail, they come out of jail, they're still abusing substances um, and it, it just doesn't work. So uh, I'm very excited about um, continuing that. We have a pilot program and it's going to be something I'm going to be looking at very closely in the next term. In the next term as well, um, we are going to be dealing um, with revenue issues. Um, all of us, I think many of us know that um, the revenues still have not increased to the level in which we would hope they will with the recovery, even though Massachusetts is doing really better than most states throughout the nation. Um, we still have a tremendous need for revenue and it's going to have to be something we're going to have to figure out together. Um, one of the problems that we're facing is public transportation deficits um, with the MBTA deficit and so forth and so on. So these are issues that are going to be difficult. Um, I am usually considered um, amongst most as a very conservative Democrat. So I really feel when we look at the transportation issue, we're going to have to dig deep and make some more reforms in the transportation system. And uh, Representative Dempsey and myself are going to be arguing very strongly um, that when we do transportation reform, it's not just focused on assisting Boston, but it's focused on assisting um, the Merrimack Valley and the entire Commonwealth. We are all in need of more public tra transportation, and it's not just the Boston, the greater Boston area. So those issues are going to be front and center um, as we proceed. Um, another issue that's going to be front and center is that of substance abuse. Uh, we have in the last term, we passed some legislation, um, we called it um, colloquially the three strikes bill and you're out. And we passed that and I supported that and that was to address um, those criminals that are most violent um, and have been uh, repeated violent criminals. So that on their third very serious crime, um, they are not, um, they do not have the availability of probation and appeal. Uh, I thought that was important, I supported it. But on the other hand, we have a lot of people in prison right now. Our prisons are full, as you all well know. Um, they are full to the tune of being overcrowded. And one of the main components of those in prison right now, or one of the, the main areas of uh, the reasons why they were overcrowded is because we put a lot of people that have substance abuse uh, issues in prison. <coughs> so there have been studies across the country. In fact, an unlikely source, Texas, um, has some pilot programs that we're looking at um, to address substance abuse because putting someone in jail who has a substance abuse problem um, usually accomplishes very little. Um, in fact, when they come out of jail, sometimes they um, have more criminal intent than when they go to jail. So we have to come up with some better programs to address substance abuse. So having done that first part of the legislation in terms of addressing violent criminals on in our neighborhoods, um, now we have to go back and look at something that's smart that pertains to substance abuse. So transportation and substance abuse are going to be um, the issues that we're going to have to deal with right off the bat when we resume session in January. Um, and right now, ongoing, of course, we are trying to figure out how we're going to address um, the, the, um, uh, the lab situation um, in Boston. Um, whereby a lot of criminals are going to be released on the street because a lab technician, um, uh, I guess, um, was not um, a public servant in the, in the sense that we need public servants in a very, very important job. So that's something that Representative Dempsey is very, very involved with right now. 
Um, we are going to need to get some more district attorneys on board. We're going to need to um, to somehow put more law enforcement out on the streets to address this issue, which is really serious. And we don't know the extent to which um, it will um, encompass. You know, right now, you know, we're looking maybe 30,000 or more folks being released from uh, jail for associated crimes uh, pertaining to the drug lab testing. So it's a serious thing. So that's what we're doing right now. Um, and then when we get back, we're going to be looking immediately at some of these other issues that are very, very pressing. So I'm very excited um, to represent um, part of Haverhill. And the way I view it is, um, I've always viewed it this way, when you have a small portion of a community, and my portion isn't by small, by any, um, by any measure, but um, I represent all of Haverhill. And my constituent services will represent all of Haverhill. And I obviously will work with uh, my colleagues in the House, whether it be Brian or someone else, um, to address any issues and concerns um, that you have. We work as a team. I've been working with Brian now for six years, um, and I find him um, a tremendous representative. And uh, so we will all be working on these issues together, and um, I hope that you'll pass the word um, that I will be representing part of Haverhill, and I do ask you for your vote. I am unopposed, but I do ask you for your vote in this coming election, um, and I have some information that I'd like to pass out to you, and please do not hesitate to call my office. Um, and I'm just going to, if it's okay with you folks, circulate around and ask if there's anything that you'd like to bring to my attention. Uh, and I want to thank you so much for just stopping in. And of course, there's plenty of more donuts and uh, muffins down there and some coffee. And I don't want to bring them home to my two teenagers. They eat enough <laughs> junk food as it is. So uh, please avail yourself um, of those. And um, I'm just going to walk around and talk to folks and um, see what's on your mind and if there's um, any way that um, I can assist from a constituent perspective. So thank you so much for your time. I'm going to stop talking. Politicians talk way too much all the time. I'm done. So I will be here for a couple minutes. And thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you.